I'm Delphine Traoré, CEO of Alliance Africa, so regional CEO of Alliance Africa. Been in this job for about um, about a year and with Alliance for about uh, close to 20 years. And I'm also on the board of two um, other companies um, that are doing quite a lot when it comes to financial inclusion in Africa. One is Agra, which is the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, um, and also with the Africa Risk Capacity, uh, which is uh, an insurance arm of the Africa Risk Capacity Group, which is a, a specialized agency of the UN. For me, financial inclusion will be reached, really, maybe I should explain it in this manner. Uh, it will be reached uh, when the majority of adults in Africa in particular have access to financial services that they can not only understand, but also use effectively uh, to improve uh, their social economic condition. When we look at our continent, there's a, the World Bank Index that says that there's an average of less than 40% of adults that have bank accounts. Uh, the numbers on mobile money is a bit better. It's about 60 to 70% of people have mobile money. Um, but then the rest of Africa, the data is not really clear. Um, so the, the, the only way to continue fostering, or at least to foster uh, financial inclusion, we have to make it easy for people to be able to borrow money, to save money, um, and also to invest and protect their, their assets. Um, the, when you look at the financial industry in Africa, we've essentially focused more on the middle class um, and the people that have a job and the bank accounts. And these are the people that we try to um, convince to uh, maintain the bank account, the people that we try to convince to try to borrow money. Uh, but we focus a bit less on the emerging consumer when it comes to um, financial inclusion. And that's really where we can kind of move the needle there. There are various reasons why insurance coverage in Africa is so low, but I'll, I'll focus on a few uh, because I think many people know the others. The, the ones that are um, key is that the insurance industries tend to make products that are um, sometimes difficult to understand, um, quite complex products. We are not always able to explain the product to the consumer that is buying it, which means that when there is a loss, uh, there's a misunderstanding of what the insurance company will cover and what it will not cover. And in a situation where the loss is not covered um, and the consumer did not understand that this is a loss that would not cover, then we start building uh, a trust issue uh, with the consumer. So if you don't trust the insurance sector, then you don't wanna buy insurance. But more importantly, um, and this also comes in particular um, on our continent in, in Africa here, is that the distribution channels are not evolving, right? Uh, just like in the banking sector, we focus on the people um, that either understand insurance more or less, uh, people that are already working, um, but we don't really go after the consumer um, to make them understand the product and to uh, convince them to buy or to make products that are more relevant. Uh, for them. So unless we are able to go to the consumer, find them where they are, um, whether it's in rural areas, whether it's in the cities, um, it's going to be difficult to increase insurance penetration. We can't just sit in our offices um, in different branches that the insurance companies have across uh, the country and expect that the consumer will come to you. Um, first, we have to be able to sell them the product. We have to be able to understand their needs and create products around that. So these are various reasons why um, penetration is so low and, and that we have to, to heavily work on. But distribution is key. And that's where the fintech sector um, makes a difference right now. I, I would say... Uh, it's not so complicated, right? But it's it's a bit harder to, to implement. The, the one thing that we need to absolutely do is that we need to digitalize our customer journeys. As I was saying in the previous question, um, we, we need to find a way to distribute our product um, in the way that is simple for the, cost, uh, the, the customer to, to, to buy it. 
um, they need to be able to do it in, you know, we've seen it done in three clicks. You know, you, you look at a product that you want to buy um, and with your smartphone in two, three questions, you're able to buy the products. When you have a loss or a claim, you are able to do that also two, three clicks. So digitalizing the journey uh, for the for the consumer is, is absolutely key. Sometimes there's no secrets, right? Um, I, I think I would challenge that. I'm not sure um, that fintechs have overtaken banks, right? We, we look at the global fintech sector. We're still talking about $210 billion. Um, uh, dollars with looking at the the uh, financial uh, global financial sector we're talking about 23 trillion dollars so um the fintech industry although it's growing fast and much faster than the banking sector there's still a lot uh, to do to reach uh, an industry that's been um running for centuries right for, for the insurance industry, it's it's more or less the same thing. When you look at uh, the growth of the insurance sector in Africa, um, we're growing about 8%. The banking sector is growing about 6%. The fintech sector or the insure tech sector is growing on an average of 20%. Um, so there's, it's growing faster, um, but not overtaking yet. However, uh, what is, is important is that the insurance sector, uh, as, as the banking sector, needs to work quite closely with the uh, fintech um, sector. Uh, when you look at the insurance sector in particular, we at Allianz, uh, we've been a, a, in business for over 130 years. Um, so, and uh, this is a sector that is also heavily regulated compared to the fintech sector. But the fintech um, companies are much faster, much more agile. So it's important for us to partner with them. Um, we have bought into fintech or insured tech companies like BIMA um, and continue to do so. So we should not see it as one sector will overtake the other, but it's important that two sectors work together because the only way to make a difference and increase insurance penetration in Africa and increase um, uh, financial inclusion in Africa is for the regular insurance sector or the regular banking sector to partner with the fintech companies and, 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 and be able to do that. The key message is essentially simple. When, if, if we take Africa, we're talking about financial inclusion. Africa needs to be healthy and Africa needs to be fed, right? So when we talk about health, we need to be able to um, sell products in the insurance sector that, that all um, our population have access to, whether they are in the rural areas or whether they are in the urban areas. And we're seeing um, urbanization in Africa going quite fast, but we still have many of our people that do not have the basic health insurance uh, covered because it's, it's sometimes too expensive. Um, agriculture is also key. Uh, because we need to be fed. We need to make sure that our farmers are able to live off of uh, the production of their farms, despite uh, the challenges that they face with climate change. Um, so it's important that the insurance sector is able to provide products together with the fintech sector, um, that the population is able to access health care or health insurance and also insurance for crops and the farms. So at the end of the day, we need an Africa to be healthy uh, and also um, to be able to feed itself. Um, and this is where the, the financial sector comes in and can play quite a strong role there. Mm -hmm.